Hello everyone, this is Danny Brown. Welcome to day six of Globalization and Culture One class. Now you've just finished your test. If you have not taken your test, you better take it now because you should not be watching this video until you have finished and turned in your test. You have 30 minutes to take that test. So please do that now. If you have finished your test, here we go. We're ready to continue American education. Uh, we were talking last week about uh, elementary school and we talked about the basic IRE that is used in elementary school and that continues to be used through uh, junior high, high school and to some degree college. But let's continue studying by moving on now to American junior high schools. All right, now uh, we're studying American education, and I said junior high schools. Oh, excuse me, I've got a misspelling there. Okay, I fixed that spelling. Now, uh, I said junior high schools, but actually it's middle school slash junior high, because there are two different systems. In the middle school system, students enter the middle school early. They leave elementary school early, in the, and they start middle school around fifth grade. Uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. In the junior high system, the students stay in the elementary school until sixth grade or seventh grade, and then they begin junior high. Okay, so uh, we'll do the middle school and junior high. Uh, in uh, elementary school, the students were, were learning, uh, they were dependent, and dependence describes them. Students are dependent on the teacher. Students also learn to speak out their opinions in the IRE, initiate, respond, and evaluate uh, question and answer. And the students are taught to use knowledge actively to solve problems. Now that's elementary school. And here is a picture of elementary school, some cute kids there. Now in junior high or middle school, junior high is usually eighth and ninth grade, middle school fifth to seventh grade. Uh, they are learning independence, and, and let's look at how this is learned. Uh, there are many ways, of course, and uh, every culture has, uh, every society has different ways of teaching. Um, here we have the students in junior high. Uh, this is junior high age or middle school age. These look like maybe sixth grade. Um, here we have some boys here. We have a group uh, more black students than white, but they're mixed together here. Uh, here's a, a student who uh, is in junior high looking at the computer. All right, uh, here's a mixed class. We have uh, whites and Hispanic and uh, black in one class, and that's very usual for America. Notice the, the dress, the different dress. There are no uniforms in American junior highs. Uh, do the kids go crazy? No, they don't go crazy. They just wear their regular clothes and they don't go crazy. Here we go. Uh, here are some junior high cheerleaders. Uh, if you step back, they look very mature, but if you look really close, they're just kids, right? They're kids and they want to grow up. All right, now uh, each one hour class in junior high has a different teacher and a different classroom. This is key to learning independence. Okay, here's a, a teacher and uh, he's teaching uh, natural science. Uh, the students will study with him and then the next class they'll move to another teacher. All right, in elementary school, students had one teacher who taught everything except the special classes in elementary school. Here's elementary school. Uh, the main teacher here, they have one homeroom teacher and that teacher teaches English, math, science, and history. And then the students will go to a professional music teacher for music, a librarian for library, a PE teacher for PE, and maybe many schools have a computer teacher, not all. Sometimes the main homeroom teacher teaches computers. So this is elementary school, but most of their teaching stays right here, same teacher, same students. And they have a feeling of, of dependence on their teacher. 
For junior high and middle school, each state and city has a different system. I will just give you one example of a system here. In many junior high, students are tested for academic level. That's, are you very intelligent or a little or low? And they're placed in three groups, high, medium, or low students. Uh, for example, the three groups, maybe they are divided into four classes. So you have four high classes, four medium classes, four low classes. Okay, so uh, the average junior high has about 20 students, actually about 18 students. And so that would be 12 classes of 18 students, the high students, the middle students, and the low students. And the high classes, they're one group. All the classes together are one high group. Middle are one middle group. The lower are one lower group. Okay, here's an example. Group one would be the high students. And all the same students would be in one class in math, first period, that's Ichigen Mei. Then Nigen Mei, second period, they would move to English. All the same students, but a different teacher. Then third period, they would move to science. And fourth period, they would have a history teacher. And so there are four different teachers, but the same students. Group two has the same, but their uh, math and English and science and history is a little easier. Group three is the lowest students, and they're going to have very easy classes, but four different teachers, okay? Now, in many junior high schools, students can choose a few classes, not many, just a few. For example, they have the math, English, science, and history, and these are chosen for them. They have no choice, but then they can choose maybe band class or art class or French class or Spanish, construction, how to build a home, home economics, how to cook, how to clean, how to uh, so close, okay? So they can choose some of these classes if they want. These are examples only. During junior high school, students are learning to be independent. The students do, do have a homeroom class. They have a homeroom class, whoops, just a minute. Uh, so they still feel part of a class. However, the movement from teacher to teacher makes them feel a little bit lonely. Many junior high teachers see more than 100 students each day. They don't know the students. They can't. There's too many. And a coldness begins to grow between students and teachers. Junior high coaches are famous for being rude to kids. They sometimes curse at kids. It means they say really bad words. And English bad words are really, really bad. And so these coaches are cursing at these kids. My junior high teacher often said, do it for yourself. I'm not your mother. Okay, here's, a, here's an example. The, the student says, coach, I forgot my homework. Can I give it to you tomorrow? And the coach says, don't ask me for anything special. I'm not your mother. Now, not all coaches are terrible like that, okay? But there are many coaches who are rude. They have so many students, and they want the students to grow up, and so they treat them they say, I treat you like an adult, and they make them do all their own work by themselves. If they don't do it, they get in big trouble. Okay, so here are the groups in, uh, in the junior high, and they have uh, choices. So they're, they're in with the same students here all the time, same students, but if they choose one of these special classes, they will have a different group of students. And ooh, that's exciting because they get to be with different people for the first time. That's interesting for them. Okay, uh, in Danny chose art class, and I chose construction class. I learned how to build a house. Those were my choices when I was in junior high. During PE, the boys and the girls change into special clothes. Now, when we say special clothes, remember that we don't have uniforms, and so uh, often, the students can choose their own clothes. The teacher will say, okay, wear a t-shirt and shorts, short pants, shorts. And they can wear any color, any style they want, but they have to change, all right? Now, some schools require a certain color, 
in a certain style, but most do not. After class, they must take a shower. Now, this is a time of growing up. Why? Because each, okay, each girl showers alone, but boys shower together in one big room, usually. Some, they don't, but in some, they, many, they do. Uh, let's show you. Okay, here's the girls. Each girl steps into a shower by herself, okay? But the boys, they have to stay together, all right? Here are the boys. I've covered them up their private parts so you can't see. They're just showering together. And it's very embarrassing for them and, the, and because they've never done this before and they're ashamed, but they're learning to be independent. And here is an example of a boy's shower room when there's nobody there, okay? It's just a big room. And they do that in junior high, they do that in high school, and they do that in college. Everybody showers in front. Now, this looks like an onsen, and maybe Japanese don't mind. But for the boys, this is a big shock. Uh, at this time and the girls never do this now this is very frightening for some boys who have never taken a shower with other boys some American women who come to Japan do not like onsen because they never shower together with other girls and so when they see the onsen of Japan they're, they're like ah they don't want to do this it's a big shock to them uh, some guys do that I had a, a man who came and visited me from America. I said, let's go to a big onsen. Uh, it's a hot springs. He didn't know what hot springs was. He thought it was just a river. And so we went to this uh, onsen and we, we had to take showers together and he was hiding under the water because he was so shocked. But most American boys are used to showering with others. But that's just a bit of culture. If you have an American, you better make sure that it's okay with them to go to onsen. Uh, here's a Japanese restroom. Uh, notice that the door goes all the way out down to the bottom of the floor. Now here's an American restroom. Can you see the difference? Look here. Uh, down below, you can see. And many Japanese visit America, and they're shocked that people can see their feet underneath. And they say, oh, I'm embarrassed. People see my feet. Why do Americans do that? They do that to protect people. Because if there's an attack uh, on someone, you can see the attack going underneath. And also, uh, nothing bad can go, like taking drugs or sex in there, because they can all, people can see underneath. So uh, you can see the difference between the American and the Japanese bathrooms. Okay. Now, high school. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the high school class. Here we are behind me. You can see a high school chemistry class. The teacher is teaching the students and they're doing an experiment. Let's talk about high school um, in America. All right, I suppose high schools in America will be something like in your country. People are people, but the culture is quite different. Um, here we have, uh, remember I taught you these words, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Freshman means first year student in high school or college. You're a high school freshman or you are a college freshman. Second year is sophomore. Now there's uh, O, 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 but this O, the second O is not pronounced. And this O is pronounced ah, sa, sophomore, sophomore. That's second year student. This one is junior. That's a third year student senior that's a fourth year student so high schools in america have four years japanese have three years but altogether we both have 12 years and then you graduate high school okay now the junior and the senior are called varsity they are the higher level upper level and uh anytime you see football or base or basketball it's varsity football varsity basketball varsity baseball because they are the higher level students and they don't let the lower level students play on those teams. Okay, now elementary had dependence on the teacher. Junior high is learning independence. High school is relaxed independence. This is very important. The students are not nervous now about being independent. They're used to doing things by themselves. Here's an example of a, a high school class. They're smiling, relaxed. Of course, they're high school students. High school students get nervous about things. Uh, here's another class. 
uh, different type of clothes. Maybe it's winter here, I'm not sure. But there's no uniforms, no uniforms. Now notice that these boys here on the left, he has a hat and a hoodie. A hoodie is something you put over your head. This boy here is wearing a hoodie, okay? And some schools allow hats inside, some schools do not. It depends on the school. Everyone has their own clothes, their own way of, of dressing. Uh, there's a drink in the class, okay? Not all schools allow that, some do. There's a high school band. Uh, there's a mixed class now. Here's uh, here in the back a white and a white girl, a black boy, a black girl. This looks like a Hispanic boy, Hispanic boy. Um, so having mixed races is pretty common in American schools. <clears throat> here's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a chemistry class. Your teacher, notice their teacher has a little bit long hair. That's not so unusual. Most American men have shorter hair, but uh, longer hair is not unusual. Okay. Uh, here's a happy class. They look very happy, don't they? Smiling. Hello. All right. Uh, here are some high school football players. Um, the guys are look really strong and sure, and the girls look beautiful. Okay, here's a picture of some of the guys up close. You can see their faces. These are high school seniors. Here's the girls. Now notice that they have earrings, uh, makeup, eye makeup, lipstick. Here's lipstick, and that's no problem. She has her hair dyed. All right, this is probably natural hair. This is natural hair, but this white, white hair is not natural. That's dyed hair, colored hair. All right, okay. Uh, guys don't usually wear earrings, but sometimes they do in America now. Not so unusual. Uh, you'll often see a lot of, of tattoos in American high schools. Yes, tattoos are popular now in America. I don't like them, but some people do. Okay, there's some, uh, some high school uh, cheerleaders, and she's got her hair colored all red, and that's not a bad thing. She's not a girl with a bad attitude. She might be a very good student. It's just normal. Okay, you can see up close. All right, there's some nice, happy girls. Okay, ability level classes. Now, American uh, high schools uh, begin to divide the students like the junior high. The junior high divide the students uh, into groups, but keep them in homerooms. The American high schools do not have homerooms uh, they might have a homeroom, but they go to the homeroom for 10 minutes. The teacher checks their name, gives them an announcement, and they're finished. They leave. And there's basically no homerooms. And what they do is, for math, English, science, social studies, they will divide, especially math, English, and science, they will divide the students by their ability and put them in higher or lower level classes. And the students have no choice. If they're lower level, they must take lower level class. If their test is high level score, they have to take a high level test. Uh, why do we do this? Because in Japanese schools, you have to take a, an entrance exam to enter a class, to enter a school. If you wanna go to a good high school, you have to pass with a high score. But uh, in American schools, uh, high school is free for the government. Everyone goes. And there is no test, and there is no choosing schools. You do not choose your school in America. You must go to the school that is near you. If you want to quit the public schools and go to a private school, you can quit, and you can pay money to go to a private school. But most students in America do not go to private schools. They go to public schools, and they don't have to pass any entrance exam. So what happens is you have low students and high students in the same schools. How can you teach a school with really high and really low students? Well, you give them tests, you send the high students to the high classes, you send the low students to the low classes. Here, the low students are taking practical math, shopping. High students will take calculus and trigonometry. Let's look at an example. In the practical low class, you make 1500 each month. 
You have to pay food, clothes, house, rent, entertainment, etc. So let's make a monthly plan for your money. This might be an example, and the students have to learn uh, how to use percentages and fractions and um, simple math to do daily things. That's the low class. Now the high students are gonna take something like this, okay? This is very difficult for me. I can't do this. Uh, this is calculus. And so there's a big difference in the same school between the different students. And so in the uh, science classes, the low students are gonna take earth science, studying about the earth and nature, geology, studying about rocks, environment, that's uh, uh, Kankyo, uh, universe, the stars. The high level students are gonna study chemistry one, that's pretty easy. Chemistry two, very difficult class. Physics one, difficult. Physics two, impossible. Physics two is like a college level class, extremely, extremely difficult. Only the high level students can take that. The low level students are not allowed because their scores are too low. And so uh, this is happening in the same school. Now what happens is that uh, you have these students, let me stop here. Um, you have these students and um, they take one class, okay, let's say they take a lower level English class and then they uh, have a 10 minute break. Now they have no homeroom, they have no a basic class of students. They finish that English and they come out of the English class and where do they go? They're just walking around. They can walk to their locker, they can walk to the gym, they can go to one of the reading rooms, they can go to the library and sit down for five minutes, and then they go to their next class. And they meet a completely different group of students. And then they go to another class and they meet a completely different group of students. And so what happens is these students feel very independent, uh, a little bit lonely, a little bit unsure, who am I? And uh, next week, we're going to talk about what do they do to make friends since they keep changing their groups. Okay. Now, uh, in this situation where there's a lot of independence, it gives the students a good chance to grow up and to become adults quickly. But there's also uh, a lot of uh, students who are not watched by the parents and not watched by the teachers and they feel uh, unsure, they want to do something special for their life. And many of them turn to drugs, uh, to drinking alcohol. Um, there's a lot of drinking in America schools. Now, 9.3% uh, of American students said in the last month, they were asked in the last month, did, have you smoked tobacco, that is a cigarette. Have you smoked a cigarette in the last month, any time? 9.3% of all high school students said, yes, I have smoked a cigarette this month. Uh, have you smoked marijuana, marifana, uh, this month? 14.7% of the 10th grade students, in Japanese, that would be koko ichi nensei, okay? Those are sophomores in America. 14.7% said, yes, I have smoked marijuana. Now the 12th graders, that's the seniors, 22.5% of all seniors in America smoked marijuana in the last month. Wow, uh, there's a lot of drugs in America. And what about drinking alcohol? 33% of the uh, high school students in America drank alcohol in the last month. Remember, there's no real law about drinking alcohol. You cannot buy alcohol at, at that age, but you can drink it if your parents allow. And so 33% drink alcohol. And there's a lot of heavy drinking because they're young and foolish and they wanna have fun and they're not realizing how dangerous it is. Okay, 22.5% smoked marijuana in 12th grade. 33% drank alcohol in high school in the last month. 
Now, uh, you might think that Americans drink a lot of alcohol, but actually, look at this. Adults in the last month, they asked American adults, have you drunk any beer, wine, whiskey, any alcohol in the last month? Only 56.3 of American adults said, yes, I drank alcohol this month. The high schoolers, 33%. And 18% of the high schoolers in America said, this month, I got drunk. That's, that means you drank too much and got crazy, okay? 18% of high school. So there's a lot of drinking. Um, let's see. Just a minute. And so uh, many people have this idea. We'll talk later uh, again about drinking. But many people have the idea from the movies and the TVs that Americans are drinking all the time. But most adults uh, just drink a bit. Many Americans do not drink. I don't drink alcohol ever in my life. Is that strange? Uh, I just don't drink alcohol. And so, uh, but in the high schools, they begin drinking and there's a lot of drugs and alcohol. This becomes a problem. Okay, we're gonna stop now. We're not finished talking about high school. Uh, next week, I'm gonna show you a video of a, a student's typical day in high school. I hope you'll enjoy that. And then we're gonna talk about cultures, uh, subcultures in the high school. Students are forming these strange subcultures in order to find friendship and it's kind of fun to watch. So we're gonna see that next week. Now, uh, this is the end of class, but you need to be sure to do your video summary. You watched a summary of a teacher teaching the IRE. I showed that to you in week five, and you have that video, and you need to watch that video again and get that paper from Google Classroom day five video summary, and you need to write a summary and reaction in English. Follow my directions carefully. Don't just write anything that you want. Uh, for example, on the first part, you do not write your opinion. I think, I think you don't write that on the first part. You write only a summary. What did you see? What are they doing? What is the action? What decorations? What about the desks and the teachers? What do you see? The second is your reaction. Reaction means opinion, uh, console, okay? And that's part two. And you need 110 words or more, 110 words or more. If you're less than 110 words, I will give you minus points. So please make sure it's 110 words. Okay, and turn that in by the due date. Check the due date on Google Classroom. We're finished teaching today. I hope you did well on your test. And I hope that you enjoyed class today. Uh, may God bless you with a fine week at AWOL College. Thank you very much, everyone. This is Danny Brown, and goodbye.